too, I think. Yeah. Approve it. Okay. 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 Approved. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, William. We're Hi, approved. Jay. Hi. <laughs> okay, we're going to do a little, uh, little visit here up for the uh, the abundant ones, or no, what do we call it? The authentic ones channel, TAO. And uh, William and I invited Jenny to come on board today and she graciously uh, agreed. So we started off by having a little private chat about mental health. And that's, you know, obviously a big part of what's going on on this planet right now is mental health or a lack of at the uh, government yeah. level, I'd like to say. But Anyway, that's that's not what we're here for, to poke fingers at the government, you know, the, all the time, but <laughs> I'm afraid I'm going to once in a while. <laughs> Tune into Randy's so, channel for more on that. <laughs> <laughs> but in the meantime, we're going to talk a little bit, because Jenny's on her way up to Canada from Tennessee. Yes! And uh, going to be here uh, next Tuesday, you said, Jenny, right? Yes in on vancouver island for some sessions and stuff and so we wanted to we were chatting about that and then we said well let's let's just hit the record button because it's all about mental health and you know mental psychic and physical all kind of combined when it comes to this health stuff that's going on and the and the wellness that is happening on this beautiful heavenly ascension that we're experiencing and if anybody doesn't think that's happening well then away you go because it is happening and it's real and it's not just pretend real it's real real so please share jenny like you're coming up to victoria right or to vancouver island yeah i'll be on vancouver island um third through the 12th and we have a talk scheduled and I don't have those dates in front of me, but actually we can put that flyer and that link here when we post this. Um, but I believe it's the, mm, the fifth or the sixth, I think it's the sixth, which is a Saturday. So we'll, we'll be doing a talk there and I'll be doing a group journey. And in the journeys, I want to talk a little bit about that really briefly because talking about mental health and all the mental things the I've been guided to help people basically I facilitate near death experiences and I know that sounds really bizarre but that's exactly what it is and I remember as a teenager always like I watched that movie Flatliners did you guys all see that movie and I remember thinking you know if I could just have a near death experience then I'd be probably enlightened you know I was always kind of like God if you could just you know you know Danny and Brinkley got struck by lightning you know I don't know but you know maybe I could I could just kind of bust out of the matrix and I'd start knowing stuff you know because I knew that that I was kind of trapped in in a, an inverted reality so I think it's kind of funny that I ended up facilitating near-death experiences but only you don't have to actually go through the physical trauma and pain of it but you we actually can at any point go up in the same place that people go you can go anytime I do it through spirit family I do it through our spirit family in heaven um they actually do it I, I, my job is just to get them to you and they pull you out and up and you go and you go in light body because we're all multidimensional and we're all able to access light body travel. Um, we don't go into the astral, um, mainly because the astral plane is real distorted. So we bypass the astral plane and we go up into the higher dimensions. And that's all facilitated through my mother, who's on the other side. And she helps and, you know, she works with me and then she brings people in and I, I help people connect and get out of their matrix mind into their God mind and have the experience. So speaking of mental health, what I've learned is that <clears throat> it's the amygdala part of the brain that the, is like the computer interface between the God mind and the higher dimensional realms. Well, this computer interface was always meant to be in communication with the higher mind 
And it was always meant to take orders from the higher mind or, or get the programming from the higher mind and from the source field. But somehow we have been getting the program from something outside of us. And that has kind of created what, what I call fear programs that are actually the illusional programs. They're not real. Um, but it also kind of locks us into the trauma mind and we start looping in the trauma mind. We have a very hard time getting out of that. And that to me is where the mental health issue stems from is fear. Fear <laughs> creates the distorted programs and that is what causes the mental imbalance. So we were discussing that I have um, a family member who has challenges with this through trauma. Probably all of us have friends and family that have this. It's very common. Um, I remember my, when I was growing up, my Cherokee grandpa used to tell me not to talk about the fact that my whole entire family could see and interact with spirits because he said they would put you in a mental institution. And back then they would, mm -hmm. you know? So I remember like grandpa, like he's like telling me, like putting fear in me about it. And I was like, you know, he's like, don't now, don't you talk about this? You know, and so we've we've thankfully come out of that a bit. I think that we've kind of lightened up. You know, we're, we can let our crazy flags fly a little more, and we're it's we, we're okay with it. There's more of us, I guess. Um, crazy, not crazy. <laughs> and maybe that's part of the ascension. You know, is that we get to be more crazy. And so the difference between yeah, I my mom said to me, I'll tell you this is so funny. When I was fourteen, my mom said to me honey, this is one big mental institution and we're all patients. Okay. And I laughed so hard because I was like, what in the world, mom? Like, what does that even mean? You know, I'm 14. She was so smart. She was so awake. And it was one of the smartest things she ever said to me. And she said, you know, if you were going to go into a mental hospital and you were going to be interacting with the patients, she said, you really wouldn't try to reason with them you would just smile and try to help them have a better day. And I mean, really, I was like, what else can you do? I love it. I never I'm experiencing this. that right now, as a matter of fact. Yeah. So I definitely know what you're talking about. Yeah. So when I'll, I'll tell you when, when COVID hit, I never really experienced <laughs> it as much as I did then. Because I would try to tell people that it wasn't real or, you know, this and that. And, you know, I just realized real quick that it's probably best just to smile and help them have a better day because they're so afraid. And so I would just try to help them relax and laughter. I would kind of laugh and I would, keep, you know, my, my, my medicine is laughter. So, you know, that's it. I would just kind of, you know, try to lighten them up and, and keep the energy lighter. So um, when it comes to mental health, what I experience here at my retreat, and I have lots of people come and go, lots, and we have people, you know, we are all in different states of what I say is really more um, peace, you know, the more at peace you are, the more it, you can be as crazy as you want to be. No, there's no real set way to be that makes you sane or insane I think it's just your level of peace that's most important um so people that come here if they're really anxious and they have a lot of fear about life or anything bugs in the cabins uh being in the mountains you know any of the things that might trigger anybody um that's where where I come in and say okay let's move your energy up into the source field and let's see how source views this. And let's see how they, they handle this in the high realms. Are they afraid of stink bugs? I don't know. I mean, do they have stink bugs? I mean, let's go find out. You know, there's nothing better than going up and having these conversations uh, because, you know, there's people here that think that entities stalk them through bugs. And, you know, and my mom says anything and everything is real in the distorted timelines because you're creating it. I mean, so what's real and not real, what you're ever you're creating, you're going to experience. So um, I think it's taking that charge of what we want to experience and create. And we follow their lead. But I think you have to come up out of it into the source field, into heaven, where you look around and you get to say, OK, this is actually 
this is more real than that. And, and, and all the little things that we sit and experience there that help you go ding, ding, ding. Okay. This is what's real. This is what, where it's at. This is what we want to be in more frequently. And how do we manifest that together? You know? So I get to sit and I get to watch people go to heaven, hang out in heaven with their loved ones, chat. And, and every time I learn something, every single time, there's never a point where I am not just blown away. And it's incredible. <clears throat> I truly feel that this is the new, this is ascension. This is it. This is ascension. We're actually moving up into the, the central part of the brain. We're getting the amygdala to start in 14, the new software from source, upgrading our amygdala through source, and we're no longer being subject to fear programs. That's what I'm experiencing. This is what spirit's doing with me. Um, so mental health, This I feel like this is the cure and the answer for all things. Because when you get out of the distorted frequencies, I've watched people have instantaneous healings in their body, everything. So here's what's interesting, and I'll stop talking because I know I'm going on and on. But what's interesting is they have instantaneous healings when they're in the source field. Because what is disease is distorted frequencies. Everything's frequency. So when you get into the source field and align and go in, go up, your body starts to come online and it starts to vibrate faster. You know, it starts to release. People have like everything starts to shake loose. So they will have like what, what we call Mack truck, where it feels like you've been hit by Mack truck for a couple of days while all the stuff shakes loose, all the lower vibrations in the body shake loose and everything's purging so that your body can stay in a higher frequency for longer periods of time, hold more light and become more light adaptive. So all of these things are happening. And when people resume symptoms, it's just because they go back into the amygdala and they start running those fear programs again and their body's vibration starts to lower and then they begin to have symptoms again. But it might take two days and they'll say, oh my gosh, I'm having symptoms again. But for a minute, I was completely clear because it takes practice. We have to relearn how to stay in the high vibration in alignment with the source field and stop going into the habitual uh, you know, program, the old, the old program. So. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> that was a load. And the beauty of, of that was there was just so much information in there, but it's like, we can re watch this if you need to, because it's video. Yeah. But the authentic side of this TAO channel is that William has some things that are just boiling up in him. I can just feel it. So <laughs> please share William. And then I'm going to poke in a little bit myself. You are so right, mister. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you for poking me. Uh, that was a friendly poke. And I actually appreciate it because yes, I do have some things bubbling up inside of me. Uh, um, all kinds of things popped up. And, and I, I find when I'm usually on these kinds of chats is that I seem to operate best and get the most from listening and connecting to what other people say. And then that triggers something within me. And then all of a sudden, you know, it's just the conversation is wow, like fantastic. Um, just some of the things that Jenny talked about brought about numerous things, but I'll start with the one that seemed the most prevalent, and that is that um, throughout my high school years, um, I I started to experience change. And on the physical realm, it looked like I worked at my dad's store and ate a lot of chocolate bars on the side and didn't tell them. And so I was, you know, pumped up on sugar, and then I go home and eat supper, and then do homework and repeat the next day the same thing. And uh, I mean, it wasn't like really bad, but I mean, it was enough to definitely affect my health because, you know, sugar levels were all over the place and in the middle of puberty and all of that too. So all of that fun stuff kind of really made for a nice cocktail of weirdness. So, uh, <laughs> but for me, uh, things that happened then, and then interestingly enough, they disappeared and then they came back like 10, 15, 20 years later which really surprised me. And what I mean by that is like, for example, 
I was, you know, like a lot of, a lot of kids at 16, they, they, uh, they want to get their driver's license, you know, in our province. It's like, they, they want that independence. They want to be able to drive. Right. So they want to get their learners. Well, I was afraid to drive. I was especially afraid to drive on the highways. And, um, it was, you know, some of that irrational fear stuff that was going on. And, um, you know, I wasn't, I think it took me until I was 18 or something like that until I really started feeling comfortable. And then, and then it kind of just went away by the time I was 18. It just completely disappeared. And I felt completely comfortable, even got some speeding tickets over the years uh, because I was that comfortable with it. But And I was able to drive people around wherever I wanted. And then for like 10, 15 years, I didn't have any trouble with, with driving at higher speeds or with passengers or anything like that. But somewhere along the way, right around the year 2000, I guess, um, I started to feel some of these very similar fears coming back up again and i'm going why am i afraid to have a passenger with me why am i afraid to drive on the freeway we, you know what kinds of things and i would i would obviously look for justification and then i'd say well I'm, I'm feeling claustrophobic because there's trees beside me and and i don't like you know feeling i'm feeling closed in but i i think you know listening to jenny is that is there's something more to that that i probably still haven't really uncovered and i i don't feel like i've completely gotten myself out of that realm either you know like I, I feel like there still is some of that fear has been a big companion in my life like it's just it's been something that's that's been um i won't say an enemy but at times it, it was it was definitely challenging for sure so so there's that element that you know rang some bells for me in, in listening to what jenny had to say um something else that we talked off camera before we started Randy, you mentioned a company called True Hope, and I've known you now for four years or whatever, and somehow that's never came up before. But when the moment you said it, I had to smirk because I I was a True Hope supplement uh, subscriber, so to speak. I started taking their supplements, and um, and it was an interesting story because I saw their their the fellow who got the whole thing started. I can't remember his name right now. I'm sorry. Um, but he had a, an actual TV show made from his account of um, his wife taking her own life because she was diagnosed as bipolar and she uh, just couldn't take it at some point. And then he started to see her, his uh, young teen, early adult children starting to show some of the very same signs. And he said, I'm not going through this again. I, I've got to find a solution. And he knew that the Western medicine wasn't the way for him. So he looked at vitamin formulations and his whole video was about that that evolution and how that came to be i still have it recorded somewhere on vhs or something but it was a fascinating story and it was it was on a channel called the life network at that time and this was like around 2005 or so when i saw this on tv and um and i started ordering the products because i that was again when that fear was starting to show back up in my life and it was a it was a vitamin formulation that was specifically designed to help people who were having different kinds of mental challenges. And they did they did testing, and they did it all in in a very uh, familiar way, a way that's done very often with Western medicine. That often Western medicine will criticize supplement companies for not doing, like doing the you know double blind studies and you know getting verifications from other doctors and things like that. So this guy went to the University of Alberta and he uh, really went for it. He like he he was challenged by Health Canada and he, he had all kinds of, you know, his <laughs> products were being taken off the shelves that he couldn't sell it anymore. And he went through the ringer and back, but he was committed as nobody I've ever seen before was committed the way I gathered from the story. And it's become a, a real success story and they still exist today. And as a matter of fact, I'm hoping to get some of my family members who are now experiencing some problems uh, with mental things uh, onto a True Hope products. So um, this video isn't meant to be a True Hope, you know, um, testimonial necessarily or a plug for the company, but um, I've experienced great support and help um, through their system. And I hope to help other people using their system and many other things that I hope to discover or have discovered or will discover. Uh, even Jenny was offering some things to share with me uh, that that I could help, you know, with my family members too. So um, that's, I'll leave it there for now. But yeah, just some of the things that Jenny said just sparked a whole bunch of things for me. 
<laughs> oh, that's awesome, William. Yeah, I had a little experience with that too when I was transitioning off of lithium and, and then learning different uh, meditation techniques and all kinds of stuff that I do now, which I, I don't use any supplements anymore, but I do a lot of, still a lot of natural uh, practices myself, you know, from fasting to, you know, UT, we won't discuss that, Jenny, today, but <laughs> many other things that we, that, you know, most people would consider odd. But the one thing that sparked in me, Jenny, when you were speaking was the near-death experience part and how, you know, the trauma can either be taken as, oh, that was horrible. And in many cases, it might be, you know, people struck by lightning or, you know, different events that happen for them to go through that near-death experience. But uh, I had a huge hemangioma, which is a mass of extra blood vessels on my right hip or my buttocks pretty much when I was a child. And I went through massive uh, he uh, hemorrhaging and tons of pain. And at that time, I was like a Roman Catholic altar boy. <laughs> so you can imagine the fear that was driven into that little boy's head from the church and all that shit, you know. Oh, my God. But the the fear was starting to leave as I got older. And then, you know, it kind of went away when I got into the age where I could, you know, fight it and fight other things and fight humans and fight all kinds of stuff. And then at, at 33, I had it run into a doctor who would, who said he could take this thing off. And I'm like, it's time. Like, I've had enough of this shit, you know, like the hemorrhaging and the pain from that. So I took it off. But in the hospital, I had a near death, Jenny. And I maybe you maybe you know this about me, but I, I uh, bled to death. And I didn't know it. <laughs> because they had me on a, a drip like an IV. And after the operation and everything was over, I, I come out of it and they took the IV out and I went into the bathroom. I was kind of moving around and doing some things. And then I was looking in the mirror in the bathroom and the sweat beads were like the size of the end of my fingers coming out of my forehead and my face. And, and I hit the floor. And I mean, it was like, okay, this is it, you know? And I went into a, a place where it was painless because basically what happened was that I did, I bled to death. And, and the only thing that was keeping me going was the in intravenous. And they, according to the doctors, they threw me back up on the bed and, and they were rushing around. My, my wife at the time was there and my, I think my sister had arrived by then, but we were, uh, they, I'm in this kind of semi-conscious state. I can still remember it at that time, you know, like not, remembering them putting me on the bed but in a semi-conscious state of <laughs> bliss like it was so peaceful and it was uh really strange so when they brought me back around and I came back in like basically eventually they stuck an IV back in that was what brought me back in they discovered but not until after the stitches broke and the floor of the bed or, or flare of the room where my bed was in was covered with blood so basically the wound had bled during the night and then the IV was keeping me alive, but the IV taken out, you know, took me out. So that was the simple story of it. But after that, you know, because it was such a peaceful event, it wasn't, it wasn't traumatic for me. The fears just left, you know, like <laughs> after that, I just had basically nothing as far as fear and I don't say call myself courageous or fearless or anything like that it was just like well if death is that wonderful and that peaceful what the hell would there be to be afraid of you know and you know it led to a, a life that was a little bit weird you know like I wrestled with bulls and I did some things that were pretty odd for my career in the cattle business and then when I started getting into the job I'm in now, people would say to me, you can't do that. They'll come after you. You know, you, they'll do this. They'll do that. And, you know, somebody will sell you out like Judas today. Remember, today's Easter, by the way, Easter Wednesday, the day that <laughs> Judas, the day that Judas uh, took 30 pence or 30 shillings, whatever the hell it was, 30, 30 bucks for, um, from the, you know, 
governing bodies, the religious sector and whatnot, to uh, sell out Jesus. That's today. Wow. And uh, in Easter week. But in those days, there wasn't too many truth tellers. Nowadays, there's so many of us, like, what are they going to do, kill us all? <laughs> and if they do, what the hell, you know, like, death is pretty cool. Anyway, it's like <laughs> peaceful, ultimately. So, I mean, what where we're at, with not just telling truth on the internet, but, you know, each of our own little paths, mine particularly deep in the banking system with the asset backed accounts beyond the credit system which many people know about and i yatter on about on my channel and get warned and threatened and all this kind of stuff for doing what i do nobody really understands what i'm saying anyway but i guess the basis of this little you know going on that i've just done is to say that do what you feel in your heart and just drop every little bit of fear that you have because there's nothing to be afraid of, especially when you yogically, yoga meaning uh, divine connection or divine unity, really. And, you know, we've gotten into the habit of thinking of it as a physical experience or a physical exercise, but it's really physical, mental and psychic when you talk about the word yoga and look at some of these words, but the idea that um, we just simply relax into that feeling of, of yoga or unconditional love, which is what the divine is, then why would you fear anything? And, you know, nobody's going to attack you because you're not attacking them. Like, it's just, I love you. You're kind of a moron, but I still love you. You know, like speaking of politics, like I said, I wasn't going to poke too much, but so thank you, Jen. Your turn again, I think. I don't know. Like we're not really taking turns, but that's what your little initiation brought out of me. So please okay, well, go I have on, some, please. Yeah, I have some things. Um, okay. This why this this is why. So talk about fear you know, if you're so irrational that you cannot talk yourself, like William was saying, you can't just talk yourself out of it. You can't logic your way out of it because it's completely illogical. And we have two different minds. We got a brain and a mind and we have the amygdala part of the brain is linear and it can't come into the now. It only operates on past experience and it's experiential based. So it has to have an experience that imprints it in order for it to let you go, let to stop trying to protect you from what past experience tells you you should be afraid of. And it's so funny because I said, when we start really understanding what the amygdala part of the brain is and does and how to work with it, literally it's like artificial. So it's like I say, we're, we're all, like the movie Avatar. We come in to these, you know, how they create the, uh, the, the avatar in the lab <laughs> and then his consciousness goes in and then he has to learn to navigate it and control it and all the things. Well, that's, this is, it's exactly right. We are, are in these avatars that we have to learn how to program ourselves instead of uh, we've, we've allowed the avatar to run us. We've allowed it to be programmed outside of us instead of us programming it ourselves. How do you program it yourself? Well, you have to program it yourself through source, through the soul, through the spirit. And so we've gotten kind of trapped in and we don't know how to get out. So people come to see me all the time and they're like, nope, can't get out of it. You're not going to be able to get me out of it. I, you're, I, I won't be able to be hypnotized, which I don't do hypnosis, but I've not been able to be hypnotized. I can't do any of this. Like I, my mind's too strong, right? <laughs> it makes me laugh because just like Randy said, unconditional love it's all done through unconditional love so you're going to be moving into a field of pure unconditional love so the artificial i say there's two realities run and run one you experience through the amygdala and that's where all the fear is and that's where all the distortion is and the other one is the source timeline two timelines at least two and the other one is your source timeline which is running directly from your higher self from source and it's running all the time it doesn't need your attention to even run because it's being run by your higher self all we have to do is align with it vibrationally so what i do is i help you have the experience and i tell people all the time i couldn't meditate my amygdala was like a two-year-old if i try to meditate it was always driving me crazy i was like yeah nope 
Um, I would get up and leave if people started meditating. <laughs> I'm like, I can't, it's torturous. Okay, so I was able, I'm able to do this without meditation. I'm able to do it without going through those processes of trying to quiet my two-year-old that is going to get louder and louder and louder the more I try to quiet it. Um, so when what we have to understand is unconditional love is the strongest vibration that we can experience here in these avatars. What we, you know, fifth dimensional reality, which is heaven, fifth dimensional reality is right next to us now. We've already ascended up closer to it. So it's like literally running right next to us. When in the past, when my mom was here, it was a little harder to access because we have come up. We definitely have some things have changed. And so now it's like right here. And so, but, but my mom was like, you all don't know it's right here. So you're not accessing it. And you don't really know that the light's coming in really strong because you're all so used to not to being in a state of separation that you're not working with it. You're not becoming light adaptive. It's just bouncing right off of you because you don't have the awareness. So, so the light is true. It's a real thing. It's here. It's around us. Living light is around us all the time in our environment. But some people, it's just like going right over. They're not, they're in the amygdala that's not accessing it from there. And this is all perception based. So think about it. It's all perception based. Which mind are you, which brain mind are you in? That determines your experience because it's your perception. And so when you switch your perception into the source God mind and you start perceiving everything through unconditional love, and that is a field that we call source field, which is really funny because it's not just some etheric thing is actually a physical thing that everybody that does sessions with me goes to and talks about. And I don't like to give too much away because I like everything to be natural, but I will just say that it, I had to laugh because I call it source field, quantum field, zero point, which whatever you call it, it's outside of linear time. It's outside of the simulated distorted reality, but the source field is is a physical thing as well and so people are going into the source field and it's the funniest thing because you can't stop laughing when you get there because you realize how absurd the distorted timelines are and you're in a field of pure unconditional love and how do you get there is because every single one of us has a loved one that we have felt unconditional love for even if it was brief everybody has had it and if you have had it you can recall it because your amygdala has imprinted the memory and your amygdala will allow you to believe it. Your amygdala will go, oh yeah, I know what that is. So I actually get you to go into that part of your amygdala that goes, hmm, that's real because I experienced it. And that's how we get, get it to let up. And it's a true thing. It's like working with your artificial mind to get it to let, let go of you and let you have the experience. And you can even say to it, hey, thank you for protecting me. I appreciate it, but I really need you to let me have this experience. I'm safe and I'll be right back. We're just going to go and have this experience and you're going to love this and you're going to get an upgrade because you're going to articulate living light language from source and you're going to put that into English and you're going to be, you're going to, you know, it's a job promotion. So all of these things work. It's amazing. And my amygdala gets all excited about it. Like if it hears the same music that I play every time when I do this, it's like, oh, 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 now what we're doing, we're getting in the field and, and, and it works. It, it let, lets me go. So you, we, we have to understand what we're working with here because it seems like it's so strong and it's got such a hold and this fear seems so heavy and we're all like, oh, we can't get out of it. We take it so seriously, but it, it's actually not at all. It's actually so easy and so simple when you can go back and you go, okay, I want you to be there. I want you to time jump, timeline jump. I don't want you to go back to that moment where you knew what unconditional love was. You felt it. You knew you were connected to something bigger. And my mom calls these connection points on your timeline and they're preset before we come in. Every one of us has a portal where it's almost like a moment where all the, the, the veils collapse and the heavens open up and you suddenly are in it, you know, and you feel it and you know it. And then just like Randy, you have that peace and you step out of the fear and you, you, your mind remembers and our artificial intelligence is so amazing.
It is so beautiful and so amazing. It was meant for this. It was meant to work with source and, and centrum and, and, and upgrade through source. It was, it's perfect. And so once you get it to do that job, it's like, hold on to your seat because I'm sitting here in a world where my mind is blown on a daily. I am just sitting here. You, you guys, I mean, when we all get this and we start, <laughs> it's endless fun. Okay. Endless fun. It's we amazing. Are, we are getting it, Jenny, honestly, like the, <laughs> the collective consciousness. Yeah. I like these words like consciousness and divine. I don't know why, but those ones are, mm -hmm. you know, it's the divine is what I would say is your word for source. <clears throat> yeah. In in my mind, but we're all yeah. using little different words, but yeah. they're all beautiful words. And that's the key is to find the beautiful words too, because that's how we're creating. But, you know, I see it now every day on a collective basis and, you know, bringing in what we're doing or what we've been talking about from the private or individual authentic ones that we are, William and his story and me and my little story and you and your stories about healing that and helping people with that, then let's just move this along to the collective and say, okay, if everything's perfect, if, if death is kind of, you know, peaceful, like, why are we so fearful of what's going on on the earth? And why are we so defensive? And why are we so wanting to get into a place where we poke the finger and blame somebody? When, if we can think in terms of that perfection, in our in our world or in the in the reality that we're creating individually let's just jack that up and say okay everything is fine you know people are making choices and this might sound a little uncompassionate but you know we're either suiciding or or you know government assisted suiciding ourselves you know like one way or the other that's what seems to be have been going on through my lifetime if i look at the deaths of the people in my life in my experience they've either made some really shitty choices you know physically and health wise and and whatnot or they've bought into a government and when i say government i'm just talking about mind control that's nothing to do with pointing the finger at some organization okay because government just simply means mind control you're allowing your mind to be controlled by some outer source or some media or something like that, when we don't really know what's going on. How many people were in the World Trade Center? We don't know. How many people got killed in the Ukraine war? Well, there's 150,000 new Ukrainian immigrants in Canada alone in the last few years. So maybe those soldiers aren't dying. Maybe they're all coming to Canada with their wives because I walk around here and the people are all speaking Ukrainian on the street. Of course, they don't mind the cold weather, so they walk around. The rest of the immigrants are hidden away in there, you know, when it's cold outside. But the Ukrainians, they're just all happy. I don't, I, we don't know any of the truth about what's going on in this so-called war, or, you know, any of that stuff. So we can either, you know, fall into me being uncompassionate right now by speaking like that ridiculously to most people or say, wait a minute here, since we don't know, and since, you know, there is some truth to everything being awfully perfect, like, you know, when I think of my neighbors and everything else, you know, yeah, there's some problems there. But my God, if the government was really that bad, you know, how in the hell do we exist? You know, there's 1.4 million people in this city I live in, which is, you know, larger than most of the big American cities. You go to the Midwest, there's no cities this big. And Calgary, Alberta, 1.4 billion million sorry <laughs> it it doesn't make sense to me that there isn't some divinity some source that's there that's protecting everyone that's just you know there for us whether we like it or not and whether we know it or not and all you gotta do is know it and connect to it and then you say well that's okay you know i'm not gonna listen to that story i I don't hate you, you know, Joe Biden or Donald Trump or Justin Trudeau, you know, like obviously you're either just morons, you know, like, or you, you believe something that isn't real. Like it's, it, but it's your choice, you know? So sovereignty comes into that equation when we just say, 
I'm just going to be a sovereign, you know, a living man on the land, and I'm going to do what I do. Am I going to fight anything? Am I going to work with? Am I going to collect some money from the government through a pension program? Why not? It's there. You know, just it's just it's just what is here, and let's work with that. And I know from you know my years and being on YouTube that I've come across as a bit of a warrior, uh, you know, whatnot. And I admit that I, you know when I watch it myself, I could perceive it that way. But I can also perceive it as, well, you're just being silly. <laughs> you know, like you guys, like you're making me laugh even more when you run a run a boat into a bridge and you know the bridge falls down. Like, why did you do that? Like, what's that all about? You know? And then I giggle. But sorry, Jenny, I'm making fun of America more than anything right now. And I no, don't, okay. mean, don't mean to, because it is the silliest media campaign nation on earth when i've been around the world and seen other stuff you know you got to tune into what's going on in america turn on that channel you know because they're doing the most stuff and it's the most insane you know when it comes to telling silly stories but well go ahead. <laughs> randy what i what i want to say just about that i'm gonna let william talk because i'm i'm interjecting what i want to say about that is people come to me and they want to know about the eclipse what's going to happen everybody wants to know and i tell them when you go into the source field and you start to interact with higher spirit and your higher self and you reintegrate this connection and knowing where you have access at any point to anything you need to know when it's a whole different way of being it's a whole different way of perceiving and creating and you have to have that we have to have that learning curve we're all you know step one come back to your connection so that you get divine intervention into your own experience and you're accessing higher truth. Well, you know, when people go up there, they want to know all kinds of stuff, but then when they get up there, there's not a single solitary word that said, everybody's just standing there smiling and looking at you. And you're just in this huge bubble of unconditional love. And, and there's no reason to talk about it. And so people come back and I'm like, so did you notice that nobody was warning you about the eclipse? They Do they seem upset? Do they seem stressed? And they're like, no. <laughs> so funny. I mean, it's like, it's so, it's like literally you've fully come out of the distorted reality and it's so, everything's irrelevant. And my mom said to me, she goes, look, you just need to be okay with dying. It's the complete illusion. Death is not real at all there's no such thing at all like and we don't really understand this because in the lower timeline we watch because our amygdala has to have linear things play out the amygdala brain will literally fill in blanks and you know how they've proven this we fill in blanks and we have to have this linear explanation or it's like it starts glitching and short circuiting well when you get into the source field and you start upgrading it that's no longer an issue so we need to definitely, it's time to upgrade the avatar and upgrade the amygdala in order for us to be able to live in the new energy that's coming and on the new timeline and understand how to work within the new rules of the, the different upgraded vibrations. We have to upgrade. It's time for the upgrade. And the upgrade happens by accessing the, the God brain and letting the amygdala download the new software upgraded software reset and it's it's this is it and then we're able to ascend into the higher without glitching because we're glitchy <laughs> anyway <laughs> what, 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 what do you mean <laughs> glitchy. i'm a little glitchy um, hey look you guys i actually i didn't even realize this morning i grabbed my canada mug so oh, here nice. i am with my canada friends with my canada mug i didn't plan that and it's all the synchronicities by the way i talk about the new timeline the new time the new higher vibrational timeline is so funny oh my gosh the synchronicities are i mean it's instantaneous everything it's cracking me up it's like what the heck it's just one it, it, it's so perfect it's so fun through the roof as they say through the roof yep. um have you ever been to a smorgasbord where there was just from 
at one end of the table to the other end of the table, everything looked really good and you knew you couldn't eat it all. And you said, well, what am I going to pick? That's kind of how I feel right now. <laughs> it's like you said so many cool things again, and Randall did too. And then going, well, which ones do I want to talk about? Because I can't talk about them all right now. There's just not enough linear time. Um, okay, let's start right there. Um, I I discovered recently through a mutual friend of ours, and I say ours because we all know him. I uh, won't mention names but for now, but... He basically encouraged me very recently to um, allow my playfulness to come out more. Uh, I have a natural playfulness tendency within my being, my personality even. And, um, and the way he was describing his experience of me was that, especially his initial experience of me, uh, which was anything but playful, was just serious, you know, reserved kind of in control kind of guy and and then he experienced me in different ways and he was completely shocked and so he thought okay well i like the playful guy better <laughs> can you be more of that you know a sort of you know that kind of thing but he was he wasn't doing it for his own selfish reasons he was doing it because he saw that i was more authentic genuine um alive by being more playful by being more of that connected to that natural part of me that I had stifled for so long. And, and to be honest with you, I was conditioned to have that part stifled within me. Uh, there was something about, I had to be serious as a kid. I couldn't, I couldn't goof around. I had to be, you know, it was important. Don't, you got to take life seriously. And now, you know, like I, I, I thank you COVID. I mean, for locking us down because I really <laughs> feel like it, it allowed me to explore different areas and avenues of myself. And now there's a lot of things that happen in the world that I just don't care about. And uh, in some ways it might seem irresponsible or not caring. That's That doesn't feel like it to me. And, and that's fine. People can have their judgments about that. But for me, it's like, um, I love that expression, don't sweat the small stuff and it's all small stuff. It really makes a lot of sense to me, right? Especially now, is that I'm I'm feeling more and more like my energy now is so different than you know pre March of 2020. A lot has happened in my life, and I'm sure everyone's lives. And Jenny, you've alluded to it. I mean, we're completely in a different realm now, really. And it's just now, you know, who's going to allow themselves to open up and connect with that new realm and the new energies and the new frequencies. And um, I am definitely open to it, but I too have come from a past of feeling uh, fear around death. I, I had this fear of death since like eight years old. I watched the documentary about Hitler on TV on a documentary on CTV one night. And when I was like, I don't know, eight years old or whatever, couldn't go to sleep after that. I started thinking about that and thinking about death and, and I just got really worked up and, and, uh, and never kind of shook that. It's always kind of stayed with me. Um, I can relate to some of the comments that of your clients, um, Jenny, that you shared, uh, saying, Oh, you can't hypnotize me or, or I won't go there. Or, I just, you know, there is, I can, I can relate to their feeling of that, their energy of that is like, like I, I took ayahuasca, for example, and and I it was a it was a terrible experience for me because there was there was a struggle for me because I think there was that part of me that didn't want to let go. And the whole the whole affair for me was not wanting to let go. I was uh, my amygdala really held on strong. It had deep roots. It kind of feels like looking back at that now, because. I think uh, had I been able to let go, it may have been a very different experience, but it still felt like it was a necessary step for me to go through what I went through, even if it wasn't a, a pleasant first first attempt at it, so to speak. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of cool things. The other thing I wanted to, to share too is, is I've recently heard in, in the times that I've been watching different <laughs> videos and different modalities, I, I see a commonality between the different things that I'm studying, which can be everything from UFOs to spirituality to conspiracy. Some people call it theories um, to parliament and government in both the U S and in Canada and all these different things. 
And what I'm learning more and more is that I, I don't know the truth. I may never know the truth. The truth may not be a singular thing. The truth may be more of a, um, a each person will have their own connection to truth. And it may not be the same from person to person to person. It may be a very individual thing. And that's okay. I've like, I was recently dubbed and I kind of like the, the name Captain Neutral because I, I don't feel like I gravitate to any one opinion or any one way of looking at things, but I'll just look at everything and just say, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll play with that. I'll sit with that. I'll let that be with me. And I'm not saying it's right or wrong. And I'm not saying anyone else should adopt it just because I'm looking at it. So there's all of those kinds of things. But the, the one thing that I do like is I I've heard the story, which kind of relates to what you were saying, Jenny, about our higher selves is that we, I, I've heard it said that we have chosen our lives as our higher selves to come back into this frequency, into this reality, into this domain, if you will. And how uh, I've heard it said, and I, I like it, it kind of actually strokes my ego a little bit, but um, I've heard it said that, you know, it took the strongest souls or the bravest souls to, you know, to, to come here at this time and, and be here. And, um, you know, like I, I don't, I, my ego says I'm not a very strong soul and it gets all, you know, nattery on me too. But the cool part <laughs> is regardless of whether I'm a strong soul or not, is I am here right now in this moment, in this period of time, in this experience. And I somehow, some part of me, somewhere, sometime, someplace chose to be here now, chose to be in this space. And, um, I, I, I like that. I like that I'm here. I, I don't know exactly what the entire purpose is, but I feel like if I just trust that if I can be as present as I can be, that I can allow for things to tell me as, as I connect more to source, what this is all about in whatever experience I'm going through in that moment, that all will be fine. All will be just perfectly fine. And you know, the little things don't bother me anymore. And so it's just, it's just a matter of, I, I find myself more and more being compassionate about other people, which I know Randall is very much like that, or at least my experience of Randall has been very much like that, you know? Um, and so I, I've, I've just, I'm starting to see that within myself and, and my life is definitely changing. I'm letting go of a business that I did basically for the money. And I don't care now. Like I just, yeah, I'm not enjoying it. So I'm saying it, as much as it's going to take a lot of effort and work to untangle myself from that, I want to do that, even though the potential to make lots of money is there because that's not what, you know, really connects with me anymore. So I've bounced around a, a lot of different things, but it was like the smorgasbord. I took a little from here and a little from there and I, I just had to try everything. So thank you for letting me just kind of throw things out there. Ginger beef. <laughs> Ginger beef. I had uh, two steaks already going for number three tonight, and I had to go down to the store again because they're like 62% off, if you can imagine. Like, not just 50% off, but I looked at the bill and I figured it out because I like numbers. 62% cheaper than normal price. I'm like, okay, I'm eating steaks all week long. So I have been. But Friday... It's going to be fish because that's traditional Catholic, you know, Easter Friday. <laughs> so I'm going to just bring it back a little bit. I don't know how much longer you got, Jenny, but we'll we'll let you finish it off, I think. if I, I'm just going to bring it back a little bit to Easter week because I'm having fun with that myself. I'm doing a video every day and just chatting about Easter. And like I said earlier, today's the Judas Day, and then it gets towards the, you know, the crucifixion and you know, all that fear-mongering bullshit it's like don't do this at home don't you tell the truth about government or religion or we'll freaking hang you up on some cross exactly hey <laughs> Come if, on. if they can do that to jesus <laughs> they can do it to us i mean you know jesus jesus was way way better than us and look what they did to him <laughs> terrifying <laughs> yeah right and as if you know like the man went on and raised some children with with mary that's my story and i'm sticking yeah. to it and, yeah and, you know, he like, tell me that <laughs> yeah 
rolled that rock back and said, get the hell out of here. Jesus, we don't <laughs> want to deal with you anymore. Just leave. Go up there to Portugal or something. And so he did. <laughs> but, you know, that's it's all coming. Portugal? And then Wait the, a second. Wait a second. He went to Portugal? Well, southern France, but eventually I think that's where this uh, Mary Magdalene story started was in, really? in Portugal. Yeah, it's oh. pretty cool. So heaven is in Portugal then? Well, heaven is okay. wherever you are once you hey, exit that. <laughs> that's where I want to move. No, I'm totally being called to move to Portugal. I just went there. Ta -da. Ta -da. And it is, I call it heaven on earth. I have never wanted to move anywhere like I want to move to Portugal. It was... <laughs> It was amazing. Anyway, that's kind of interesting. Go well, ahead. You know, there's, there's uh, like all our other crew. Remember, couple, I don't know, it's probably two years ago already that we all got to kind of together and there was Danusha. She's in southern or northern Scotland right now. She's kind of even offline sometimes, but she's still focused on, you know, a healing center of some kind. Andrea Grace, she's over in Australia right now, I think, for a little while, but she started her own ministry now and she's, she did her first Sunday service last week. Everybody that we, you know, kind of talked together that when this channel started, all just moving forward. And the That's one that I, when we brought up Portugal, the reason I started this little part was that, um, what's her name? Uh, shoot. They started a, a, a community now in the Adorbs or what do they call it? Uh, Azores? Azores, sorry. Thank oh, you, William. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, um, oh, damn it, William. What's her name? I can't remember either, but I can picture her <laughs> face. Yeah, I her and her husband. Sherry, but it's not Sherry. It's something else. I'm sorry. No, and they're over there right now, and they've got the community started. And, I mean, we're still on track with our group to to start these communities all over the world, too. So, you know, everybody from the original group, like, I'm not sure, I haven't heard from Ida lately or anything. Every now and again, she pops into my, my brain. But, you know, it's kind of exciting for me that the people that we attached to, you know, two or three years ago when all of this silliness was going on and we all kind of got together, have all really moved forward in this ascension process. It's pretty exciting. I mean... Jenny was there from day one with her uh, retreat and still there and growing and stuff, but the rest of us just kind of still on track. So it's, awesome. it's really nice. I love it. Um, because, you know, we're all being called in different ways and it's, it's stepping out of the fear is where it's at. Because as soon as we step out of the fear, we, we can just, we're free. We're free. And we're free to, to actually hear and, and get guidance. And, you know, one of the things that people say, too, is that, you know, in, in the amygdala part of the brain, I always say, you know, my amygdala wants to know everything in advance. It wants to know what's coming next year or, you know, I want to know everything right up front. But my mom in spirit explained to me that that's not possible through the spirit because we're actually creating in every new now moment. And so it's not really possible for us to know where, how things are going to unfold, you know? So we actually have to just allow things. We have to be in a state of surrender and fearless allowing so that we can get the next thing as soon as it drops. <laughs> it's like the next thing drops and there it is, but it's not, it's not there until it does. And it's, it's all part of everything aligning perfectly in this new zero point time. And then boom, there it is death is like that when people come to me they want to know when their loved ones are going to pass or you know what, what how to prepare for these things and spirit always says you know we don't know when they're going to choose to just go that happens in a zero point moment it happens in a zero point decision that their higher self makes and boom there it is and then it plays out in a really funny distorted way here but from their spirit's perspective they don't experience any death they just pop right out and there they are you know it's only here that we experience some some uh, distorted versions of leaving the body or things like that, or the body dying and all the things. But um, when I talked about um, when people go up, what gets you up into the field is your loved ones, because their love is so powerful. And, 
and their love is so already in your cellular memory. Your physical body is already connected to that very, very high vibration of unconditional love. And it's through that that's already been established. That's your portal up. It's that love that's the portal. And so all you have to do is get in all the feels and getting all the connection again. And, but a lot of us can't feel in the amygdala anymore. You know, we've disconnected because the fear keeps you from feeling. Um, but it, what well, all you have to do is feel their love and in, in your in, and it's that simple. Everything's so simple in source. And when you get in the field and you're up there and you're just sitting with them and you're realizing who you are and what they are and what it's all about. And you come back with that memory everything changes in your life. That's like people that have near-death experiences. Everything changes. They're totally different. And so your higher self is actually able to access you and overlay you. And so I think what's happening now more and more too, I'm personally noticing that um, our spirits are kind of stepping in. Our higher spirits are stepping in and integrating with us now where before there was a separation and that, that separation's going away. And so the higher self is kind of like, okay, kids, you've had enough fun. It's <laughs> reeling you back in, you know, and there's this, um, you know, some people feel like they're even like walk-ins, like there's just a different energy coming in. Have y'all noticed this? It's like, people are just, it's instantaneous changes and shifts. I'm experiencing it. I'm, I'm experiencing it here. Even some of my family members. So I'm just, you know, keeping an eye on it because there's a lot going on that we don't notice and don't see. Uh, but I do know that when we start accessing source with more intention, hold on to your seat because everything starts to change. And if we start to, one of the things Randy said, and I also noticed this with William, I love William, how everything you look at, you look at from a positive perspective. And from your perspective, no matter what's happening, it's all okay. And that's true. And you talk about what's true and not true. The only thing that's true is love. The only thing that, and however that love expresses itself and creates itself is what's true. And so we get carbon copies of artificial love through the amygdala because the amygdala can't come into the source field. So the amygdala just runs carb. It's like artificial intelligence can't really feel and can't really know. And so you realize that if you're in the artificial brain, you're only experiencing carbon copy artificial versions of everything real. But when you move into source field and you let your centrum brain activate, and you're experiencing reality from the centrum tethered to source, you are actually always walking in a creation of unconditional love. So no matter what happens, that love always turns it into a positive. It always turns it into something divine. So you will watch, all you have to do is watch, intend, walk in it, and you will see that everything is flipped right side up that's inverted by the amygdala everything's flipped right side up right before your eyes as you walk in it it's just it's just the law of love <laughs> it's the it's the way it is so you're free to just watch it you just don't even have to do anything but but just say you know you command the love i love the word command because jesus used it a lot we don't negotiate we command we don't we're, we're the creators we're commanding the creation so we command that love love we you know we co-create through that love and that is where i feel we're learning we're just like babies learning we're learning this again you know it's just like it's cute the, <laughs> the words, like, the oh, words you know, that come up so cute. i like i like command but as king is the command right because you're as king like you're not so we we as we ask for the uh, for the divine, and then we just have to accept and surrender to it. Once you ask for something, you're gonna get what you ask for. So, you know, that's I've, I've been studying. Well, like I like to go into all kinds of different things. I did the Kabbalion Hermes Trismegistus stuff, and then I, the latest was um, a friend of mine in India who lives in Oroville, which is an international community. She's an American girl too been there for 13 years she introduced me to Sri Aurobindo and the mother 
God, just beautiful teaching. Not, again, not a religious thing, but just a teaching on how to, you know, do the yoga, which is the divine con or connection to the divine. And in that, it's it's just been a another wonderful process for me because the idea of surrendering to the mother, you know, the matter, M-A-T-E-R in Latin actually means mother, you know, like so matter and mother is something that I've been really focused on since I was introduced to this stuff. And the idea that, you know, as above, so below, when you look at a um, the yantra, you'll see the, the triangle like this and then the triangles like that, right? So as yeah. above, so below. The father being the more of a A position and the V being the, the mother. And I just, I do this Sri Yantra for, 10 minutes of my breathing exercise every morning. And I stare at that and I think, you know, as above, so below. But it's, you know, the father to me has become the the love or the mystical or whatever you want to call it, that, that kind of um, psychic side. And then the mother does everything else. And when I think of that physically, that's the case too. You know, what does a father or a male do in a, in a creation aspect besides give a little spark and then the mother creates the the being or the animal or the plant or whatever you know like it's all about creation with the mother so it's really helped me to 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 say in my mind just surrender to source as you you might say jenny but surrender to the mother like it's so much easier for this beast to surrender to the feminine than to surrender to the father who's you know in our patriarchal society we've lived in for so long to say oh just just surrender to the father eh, but surrender to the mother no problem i can do that so that's kind of what i was thinking but again you mentioned jesus again and of course you know the balanced mother and father within that man the divine feminine divine masculine balance that that Jesus Christ exhibited as a pattern man has to be recognized too. You know, like that, it, it, I often get into, well, what about Mary? But, you know, she was balanced just like he was. And someday, you know, the gospels of Mary will come out and the truth about, you know, Mary Magdalene and her daughter, Sarah, and the bloodline of Jesus Christ and their royal family, which leads right down to Diana. Oops, now I'm telling all kinds of stories, but all of that stuff is going to come in the, in the near future too. the reality that has been hidden behind some silly stories, you know, imperial family stories or government stories or whatever. And, you know, we can poke away at it and just give little things. If people want to hear more about it, I got my channel that I blast away on it. So, and Jenny has all kinds of resources and, you know, we're going to post below, you know, in the comments on whatever video this ends up on. I'm going to put it on my channel. We'll put it on the Dow channel and we'll share it around. And hopefully that'll get some people to pay attention out there in Victoria, because what you're doing with those people there is what we're doing here, but jacked up to the next level because we are communicators. And if we communicate in writing, that's one thing. When we communicate voice that's another when we communicate on video that's the next but when jenny can put her hand on your head or shake your hand you know in victoria it's going to be even another level of you know surrender to that divine that's in her and that's in us so i'll leave it at that and no. william i'm sorry you <laughs> jump in please Love to be anytime. sorry about that that's totally okay. fine I love your sharing. I always like listening to you. Um, I don't know if there's much more I wanted to share, except the one question at the very beginning, just before we started recording, I wouldn't mind bringing that back up a little bit and kind of related a little bit to what Randy was just talking here at the end, is if for those that maybe don't feel, as, as we're aging, as we're getting older in physical age in this dimension at the present time, there's the there's always that thought of, I'm not sure I really want to go down the Western medicine path. I would like to use more alternative medicine and modalities. 
in my aging process as a support system, as a go-to place. Uh, Jenny, would you have any recommendations or things that you could share, even in general, um, to the, the viewers about what a person could do to sort of set themselves up so that they could see people that are more into alternative means and, and try to rely less on Western medicine? Well, we were talking about the Vancouver group, Vancouver Island. Um, I believe there it's called the new you, I believe is the clinic. Um, and I can post all that in the links. Um, but it's a, it's a beautiful place where they, they work with frequency healing and they bring a lot of people together too. So it's a beautiful community over there that they, they met each other all through this couple from South Africa that have come and set this up there in Vancouver Island. And so I recommend finding places like that. They're popping up all over there where, where these clinics are working with frequency healing modalities. Um, one of the things that I have is a quantum biofeedback and in quantum biofeedback, we <clears throat> actually are able to do frequency healing remotely. Um, so in each of each of my sessions, we set you up. I set you up in my quantum biofeedback module where I've got your voice recording and it reads your voice. And then we do a photo and then we do, it'll read, um, it'll do an aura. It does um, all kinds of things. And one of the things that they said at the Truth About Cancer conference, the doctors actually said that at some point we're no longer going to need to do anything invasive because these quantum biofeedback apps are able to detect everything that's going on. It's pretty accurate and it's profound. I only use it so that I can look at the biofield. I like to do before and after of the biofield before you go into, into the field and come back because what we're seeing is, is the light activated in the out of your head. So it actually is showing us in the quantum biofeedback that you're activating something and it's pretty standard for people that are going up into these near death experiences that they have a light activation. And I love to show it because we are visual and we need to see things like this. So I use it all the time for that. But um, we also, I also use it <clears throat> for anything and everything. If I start feeling sick, if I start feeling like I'm just run down, you can play what they create for you is a voice activated uh, frequency healing tone. They use, bin they use my binaural beats and they use frequency. So Feggio's and they'll create a realignment that you can play for 15 minutes. So I just will play it while I sleep or you can run it for 30 minutes. But when I use that, I, all symptoms go away. And so I feel like it's so profound and people are using these to heal cancers. I mean, all kinds of things. I have to be careful saying all that. I'm not a medical professional, but biofeedback is helping realign us physically through vibration. Everything's vibration. Vibration is either distorted or it's aligned and everything has an optimal vibration. So quantum biofeedback technology is something we can have at our fingertips. And I feel every, all of us at some point will be using these technologies to keep ourselves realigned. And so we have mastered our own alignment. And that's where we're at right now is all of these things exist already inside of us. The centrum part of our brain is in the shape of a pyramid. It's already harnessing living light, no different than the pyramids that, you know, are anti-aging, all the things. So we are walking med beds. We have all of this in our, in our bodies already. We just need, we're learning to activate those things. And these, these are tools that have been given to us. No different than ayahuasca has been, is a, is a plant medicine surrogate for you to help you get in the field and help you purge and help you with all the things that helps you with all of these things are just vibrational surrogates for us until we become our own master of our own vibration. And so this is where we are. Um, there's clinics set up all over, I think now more than ever to help with these things, listening to Sofegio frequencies, even you can play those for people that you love that are sick are having issues you can play sofegios they help realign you um right frequencies spooky two frequencies are available on youtube for every ailment you can imagine 
and you can play them by sticking headphones in your phone and putting your headphones on the part of the body that needs to hear it. So you're not actually listening to high pitched sounds, your body will hear it. So you just need to get the frequencies on your body. Uh, with the quantum biofeedback, um, I will play those like for people that are in the hospital, I can play those tones for them remotely and I will keep monitoring their biofeedback and I can see how it's affecting them. I can see how things start to align. And I can also, we, we, all of us can be observers for each other from the source field. So when I become, it's no, uh, let's see, um, theta healing is a good example. We can actually all um, go into the source field and we can observe each other from the field and affect each other from the field in healing. So we become observers from a pure source place and that helps others heal. We're all connected in this, okay? So I have had people do journeys, go up into the field and observe their loved ones completely healthy and healed and interact with their higher selves and come back and that's what they experience. So we're, we're talking about a whole other level of quantum healing of us becoming uh, clearer mirrors for each other and no longer co-creating and distorted energies because we have been. We all agree to play along and agree to co-create distorted things. So we can step off that dance floor and we now are only offering a pure frequency of vibration for each other. And so it is. I mean, there's so much for us to understand and, and about all this and we're learning. But, you know, I can go on and on. But that's those are the things that I feel like are most powerful right now. Awesome. You reminded me with you, when you said psychedelics for, or you said something about a, a psychedelic. Was... It's it's Trisha and Joseph. That's who's starting the, the mm -hmm. community in the Azores. And they, they focus a lot on psychedelic uh, mm -hmm. healing. Mm -hmm. But I brought this one out because the visual effect, see? Caster. Caster oil. Oh, yeah, yeah. Again, oh on gosh. Easter. Because the, the palm of Christ, right? That's what they call it. Or proof of God. But it's uh, it's like the most beautiful oil I've ever experienced. I mean, I've been a coconut oil fan for years and extra virgin olive oil, using it for cleanses or for skin or whatever. But this stuff, God, you know, like it's just, it's a it's a beautiful product. And Jenny shared on Facebook the other day a, a video of a lady who talked all the way through it of the different qualities of it. So I thought I'd bring that one out, kind of share it to. I love it. It was because of her that I started drinking it because everybody says don't ingest it because it's hard on your digestion. But but in the old days, every everybody ingested it. So yeah, I started just taking a swig of it after yeah. her and I do feel better. And I feel like these things are all, all such amazing. You know, you, you guys, when you, I gotta say, when you go up in to heaven and you hang out in heaven, it's all there. Everything that's here is a, is there and it's not etheric. It's physical. Your loved ones have physical bodies. You can hug them. You can touch things, feel things. The colors are brighter, but we have another physical reality there that's organic. And just this little aspect of us is down here in this distorted version of reality, but there's so much there going on simultaneously obviously and we can go there anytime and you can eat food and taste it and everybody's going wait what what is all this like what <laughs> and we were always meant to be tethered there because we were we decided to come down and co-create this same thing here we just got a little lost and now we are we're coming back and we are going to be co-creating more of that pure creation together and it's all the same. It's all here. It's just minus the fear programs, <laughs> you know, take them out of the equation. <laughs> That's it. Wow. And, and if you want to live, there's, <laughs> there's so, you know, live in this life, you know, like not die. There's so right. many, so many remedies, so many opportunities. Like I went and experiment on yourself. This is the key ahead of time. Like if you're healthy, 
it doesn't mean you have to wait till you're sick to try something like castor oil. Do it when you're healthy. Do, try a primal diet for a little while. I did that for three months. I did still hamburger at lunchtime once in a while at work or a sub sandwich or something. But otherwise, for three months, I ate raw, like raw steak, raw chicken, raw fish. It was incredible. And I'm not feeling any different because of it. You know, it just, but it was incredible to experience something strange like that and then say, well, if I ever need it, I know I can do it, you know? So like Jenny said, drink some castor oil today, even if you don't need it, if you're not even worrying about something that's not healthy in you. So the question you had to start this little session that we're not, we uh, got ranting on William was, what about aging? Well, what about reverse aging? Because when you're not sick you and you do this stuff, I really think that that's what the word reverse aging has to do with, is you can actually, you know, enhance your body by doing some of these remedy things or even the sound frequency stuff that Jenny's talked about. Don't wait till you're sick. Do it when you're healthy and watch it, you know, do some reverse aging on your body as it is right now. It's it's all there for us. And, the, you know, so much uh, more capability to share nowadays than we used to have when we used to have to pick up the phone and dial and talk on the phone. We can do it in so many ways now. <laughs> so the aging gene is being turned off. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's a distortion in the DNA and it's being turned off. So that's actually happening. And, you know, the Bible, they talk about Noah who lived, what, 900 years. You don't, we actually are going back to that where we don't have to go. We don't have to die. We can just leave. And that's, that's being done. If it's, I mean, it's already done. It's just not, it's just hitting the, it's going to hit the mainstream. So, uh, so many things, and this all has to do with the Ascension, because when you come up out of the lower timelines, it's all there. We're coming up out of the lower timelines. We're coming into the pure timelines, the pure connections, the, the higher truths, and it's all there for us. So that's exciting. I don't, I don't know that I want to be here 900 years, but <laughs> hey, I can go anytime. That's great. <laughs> Beautiful. I don't know. I guess we're probably coming to the close, eh? I don't know how long it's been, William. I haven't been keeping track. It's so exciting once we get, like, rolling like that. Holy cow. Yeah, it's uh, it's been a while, but I'm, I'm cool <laughs> with that. Okay. Well, any last words, Jenny? Just, I just love this. This was great. I, I enjoy, you know, all of these all of these conversations are and these connections it's expand us more and more and more we're in a very expansive energy and it just keeps expanding and expanding and that's it no more you know contracting energy we're expanding and learning and there it's endless and it's exciting and so i love it i love i love the chat thank you thank you thank you william you finish it off for us please me, me you finish it off oh my goodness what am i going to finish it off with put the pressure on me sure why don't you <laughs> oh i i just i i just want to say thank you to to both of you it was a real pleasure um nice to be invited to chat with you about this and and um thank you for the smorgasbord it was delicious <laughs> <laughs> see you guys later okay i love you love you bye Bye.